I think the banks do have a, a, a fairly unique role in, in any economy. I think, it, I think what I was talking about earlier, though, was a company that had had a moat and that loses it. The concerns, I think, that we have about the banks are not of that type. Um, the concerns we have about the banks is just uh, the position that we find ourselves in today. And again, you know, I think it's worthwhile to step back and look at the big picture. Where are we? Uh, we're currently in the third great debt cycle since the gold rush in Australia. Um, and the last 30 years we've seen private uh, debt in Australia grow to a much higher level than we've ever had before. Um, the two prior cycles, if you're interested, were, was the 1880s property boom and the 1920s, the roaring 20s property boom. Uh, they respectively ended in the 1890s depression and the Great Depression. Um, the current debt boom is much larger. Um, and that is a, is a source for concern because, as we heard uh, 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 Philip Lowe say just last week, it makes the economy more vulnerable if and when something does go wrong. The next question, of course, is uh, there's a lot of debt. Uh, we know it's mostly household debt, uh, and it's collateralized by residential property prices. So a lot of that debt hasn't gone into productive assets. It's gone into lifestyle assets. And of course, if we look at prices in Australia, just to take Sydney as an example, you know, Sydney's price to income ratio seems to be higher than any city in North America or in Europe. And on the data that I've been able to obtain, uh, those ratios are higher in Sydney today than they were in Tokyo in the late uh, 1980s. Um, so it is a, a starting point with some, with some vulnerability in it. And I think that's why we've seen the macro potential actions by APRA, often I think instigated by the, by the Reserve Bank to start to address some of those structural issues that we, that we do have. That's a very good question. In the, in the, in the 1880s, uh, which, was, which was sort of uh, dominated by uh, you know, residential property speculation, just as this cycle was, mostly centred in Melbourne, it was the bearings crisis, which led to a cut uh, into the funding of the Australian banks. Um, in, the, uh, in the 1920s, of course, it was the 29 Wall Street crash and the ensuing Great Depression. And in many ways, the, uh, in that episode, it was the excesses were more in the US than in Australia, but you know, the US dragged us down into that, into that depression as well. Um, today, um, uh, it's not something you can forecast. In fact, um, I mentioned here that this is the third cycle since the gold rush. These cycles go on for very long, so uh, these cycles themselves tell you nothing about timing, and we're certainly not in the business of trying to forecast when something like that might happen. All I would say to you, when it does happen, it's probably unexpected.